Okay, let's go to Facebook.com and log in. Okay, so uh, whenever you log into uh, Facebook, like many of these other networks, you have to switch over to your business listing. Uh, as soon as I logged in, of course, it shows me my, um, my personal. So you have to remember on the top right corner, you want to click on that little triangle on the top right corner next to that help button and all of those notifications that I never look at for personal. Uh, so you can click on there, and then we'll switch over to your business. Okay, so the... Um the content that can be uh, created on Facebook, we have directly posts and such that would go to uh, public. And then you have um, the boosted or the paid elements. So I said previously that when you're writing something or you're creating content, you have the ability instead to go to the boost <coughs> post route. Uh, let's look at that briefly and then we'll look at the other variation of that. So you have the ability here to boost things. Not every single thing can be boosted and you cannot re-boost something you've already boosted. So you have to create a different variation of it, or you have to uh, do a different, uh, you know, completely something else. So if you had, like, great results of a photo that you boosted, um, you'll have to use a different photo or a variation of it. It can't be the same one. You can't simply reboost it. What you would... What's that? Because I've always multiple boost my accounts. They just ask for more money. <laughs> well, as the campaign is running, you can add... Well, I've gotten notice that said this campaign ran really well. Would you like to run it again? And then you hit boost again and you rerun it. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'd have to look into that maybe. Uh, it was my knowledge. It was my understanding that you, you couldn't because that's how I've seen it. But uh, yeah, maybe they changed it or uh, maybe something new. So... That might be good if they're telling you themselves that it worked really well and just, you know, pay more. That, that, may, that would be good. I mean, since it cost, it's... I was just curious because I ran the same campaign a couple of times because it said it ran really well and I was trying to get something out there, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and I spent more money on it. So the... Um, the process we saw, uh, we create something and then we boost it. Well, um, I would kind of refine it a little bit more. Um, what I, the way I did it last time, I had something like sale this Saturday. And I would put in the photo and the link and all of that, and then I went to boost. Um, we were here in this boost screen, and I was showing the details of it. I would sort of recommend to instead first actually publish what you're trying to boost first, then boost it. Because here, at the moment that I'm creating this, let's say I thought a uh, really long time and figured out some great text and picture and all of that, and then I go to boost. Well, I haven't set in stone 
the actual post yet. And here I am on a different screen with a bunch of different <coughs> options, and I may accidentally refresh, or the screen might crash, or something, and what happens is what I was doing over here would also be lost. So not only would I lose what I'm trying to do in boosting, but I would lose simply what I'm trying to create. So I would recommend perhaps think about first publishing what your, what your message is going to be, and then when it's there, you know, locked in, then you have the option to boost. So I'll write some notes here. So tip on boosting, first publish your, your post so you can't lose it, then go back to, to boost it. You can boost most content. So notice I published something, and obviously I want to get the word out uh, for this message. So then here I can boost it. And then it goes back to that same screen we've seen before we, where we set our, uh, our, our target audience. Uh, this is something where we saw that we can create these, uh, these groups that I'm going to target. So previous classes, I made these examples, healthy eating fans, uh, wealthy baked good aficionados, and so forth. So this is very similar to what we saw previously, so you can just uh, click create new audience. And this is very similar to that other screen, which is like for the whole account in general. Yes? So open the, how to open this page? Okay. The, page. the page you created last week? Yeah, I want to change to the age. How can I? The age for the whole page or the age for this boost? Uh, the whole page. That's in a different screen over on settings. Yeah. If you want to go to your settings, uh, you will see a target audience button right there. So here, uh, this is where we saw the um, ages and the locations and all of that. And I said previously about trying to cast a wider net in the beginning so that then you have data to work with. And I'll show an example of data in a client in a little bit. Our budget. The amount of time that it's going to run. Now, here is kind of an advanced thing that I think for most people is going to be very difficult to do, but could be very valuable. This says Facebook Pixel, tracking conversions. Remember, uh, I've mentioned uh, the keywords of impressions and conversions. Impressions is that people see your content, and conversions is that they actually do something, which could be as easy as just, or simple as them just clicking to follow your link. Not necessarily buying anything, but clicking your link. They were converted from someone that didn't click the link to someone that did. Simply getting a conversion of, um, you know, visiting your website. That didn't necessarily mean I sold anything, or I got contacted, or anything like that, but that was a conversion. Well, what this is about here, tracking conversions with a Facebook pixel, Facebook and all of these networks can give you some good data and stats within Facebook. It can monitor people on Facebook, your potential customers and such on Facebook. But once they leave your site, it's a different matter. If, they, if you do boost something and, it, and you write, sale this Saturday, 20% coupon use, you know, coupon code cookie123, follow the link. Well, 
Facebook can tell you when a person saw it, when they clicked on it, and all of that. But once they go over to my website, victorsbakery.com, and can't track that anymore. It's out of the Facebook system. And that's how we have this Facebook pixel. Add a pixel code to your website to report conversions, see website activity, and build audience for ad targeting. So on your website, it could Facebook could continue to track what the person is doing. But it says, add pixel code to your website to report conversions. How many of you know uh, website programming code? Zero. One and a half. Okay, so yes, this is why I'm saying this could be difficult for most of us. This requires that you uh, log into your website and you go into the area where you see the code of your website and copy the code from Facebook and paste it into your site. And if you've never looked at uh, the code of a website, you know, it's all of this right here. Behind the scenes of a website, you have hundreds, if not thousands, of lines of code that make it work. Here I'm looking at the code of this particular Facebook page. And for most of us, this is gibberish and scary. So in order for you to get that pixel to work, you or your, whoever made your website or whoever can help you with it would know what to do here. And then there is a learn more. Because I want as much information as possible. I want to know, yeah, they came to my website, but what else happened? Did they look at one or two website, uh, one or two pages on my website and then left? Did they stay in the shopping cart screen, but they never went anywhere else? If you set up this pixel, you can uh, further track that information. So let's see what the screen looks like at the moment. Facebook pixel, what are the basics? Setting it up. Managing it. So this screen, lots of information simply on that, uh, on that one topic of the, of the pixel. It's an analytics tool that helps you measure the effectiveness of your ads. You can use the Facebook Pixel to understand actions people are taking on your website and reach audiences you care about. This is one of the reasons why online marketing, digital marketing, has such a leg up above uh, traditional marketing. Traditional marketing, billboard on the highway, uh, ad on TV and the radio and the newspaper, they are at such a disadvantage for us that are using digital marketing because People hang out and use these websites all day long. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, they're on all of these websites and willingly giving so much information to these platforms that then we as marketers and companies, advertisers, can use. I can find exactly the people that are interested on a topic and show my content to them. The catch is that usually it's via paid methods, boosting a post on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, all of these social networks now have some way for you to pay a little extra and reach the right audience. Yes? What exactly does these posts do on the front end? It, it shows it right here on the right side. Desktop newsfeed, mobile newsfeed. This is when you, well, this is when you're browsing Facebook and you see something pop up either in the middle of your stuff or on the right side about something that you might care about and it's marked as sponsored. Oh. So on most of these networks, a tweet or a post will be marked as, you know, sponsored. Someone paid for it. So it reaches more of the people that would be, uh, that are that audience that would be interested in your post. And it says, you know, this has been sponsored. For so, so for some people, when they see that sponsored right away, you know, I'm not going to click that. That's fake. That's an ad. I don't care. They're invading my feed. I'll never click it. And for other people, um, they don't mind that it's sponsored, especially if it's something that they want. And for some people, they don't even know what it is. They just see, oh, that's something. Oh, yeah, John, uh, my friend John shared a, uh, something of a great coupon. Great, I'll click on it. And they don't realize it, it's a sponsored or whatever. So there's those three big camps, those that hate the ads that will never click, those that don't mind the ads and will click, and those that don't know it's an ad and will click. Uh -huh. So we want to reach them all and, you know, cast the net and catch some fish. So on mobile, it'll look something like that. I don't have any tech or any pictures, so it looks really boring. 
but it'll look like that when they're on their mobile device. They'll be scrolling to do their friend's stuff, and then that'll pop up. It'll say sponsored and whatever you wrote, and then they can take the action or not. So it's just a little ad, essentially. Basically, yes. Just like when you're watching TV or listening to the radio or reading the newspaper or magazine, there's going to be an ad every few pages, every few minutes. So, yeah, this is the new generation of ads. And one more question. Can you do that? Do you have a geography up there? Can you do it worldwide? You can, but I think that's way too way too big of a net to cast. You really want to still focus on, on an audience. Um, you know, I have it here for California at the moment, but it could be down to San Diego, it could be the whole U.S., it could be worldwide, but you don't want to be that wide open. You, want to, you do want to target, even if you uh, think that everyone in the world is going to want my product, everyone in the U.S., everyone in California, it would still be a good idea to target it. Um, and you can run multiple campaigns. You can have one campaign that is targeting California, one, one Chula Vista, and another one Japan, and and you know if you've got the budget, you'll be able to target and and reach the right audience. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can you pre-set up audiences in advance without actually going through the process of paying to do the ads? Yes, these audiences here were ones that had been set up previously. Um, I, I never actually ran any campaigns. Uh, there's a different screen where you can uh, set it up, but I think one of the quick ways to do it is, you know, I've got my brand page here, and I can act like I'm going to boost something and go into it and set it up. I don't have to actually have to go through boost because it will save. When I create an audience, I've got 16 of them here that I've got laying around. So I, you can actually go and create them, just cancel, and then use them later. So what else have I made before? Chula Vista in a 20-mile radius, Southwestern College students, rich foodies, regular foodies. So uh, Southwestern students in Chula Vista, 10-mile radius, also including Imperial Beach and National City, 10-mile radius, and downtown San Diego. They're interested in search engine marketing and Facebook, social media optimization, YouTube, ages of 20 to 50. So obviously, uh, anyone in Facebook could see this ad, but I'm targeting it to these locations within these 10 miles that might be interested in attending Southwestern College for these particular ideas. Web design classes, <coughs> learning about Snapchat, higher education. So if I've got an ad here, new class, this this uh, this spring at Southwestern College, learn how to make websites. So I create the the post in, in, in Facebook and then I boost it and I target it to this audience and my ad will show up more uh, to people that fit these descriptions. It's still up to them to click because it's up to me to create something that will make them click. Okay. Something something compelling, something funny, something interesting, something useful to them. That's the part that's hard to teach because everyone's got different um, goals and different um, uh, different audiences and such. But the tools can be used relatively easily. It is about budgets. So here it's telling me at $20 I can reach up to 1,900 people. That doesn't guarantee 1,900 sales, 1,900 enrollment, 1,900 anything. It's just that 1,900 to 5,000 people uh, would see this, and then it's still up to them to click. Victor, that, that is so cheap. Have you seen that it's effective, these, these, um, this strategy of boosting? Yeah, definitely. In these clients uh, that I work with, uh, I can show charts a little bit later that non-boosted content reaches some X audience, and then boosted contest content reaches like double or triple the audience. The more audience that you reach, then the more possibility you have of the ultimate conversion, which is, I don't know, selling something or whatever. So it definitely works, and even at, even at $1, even at $5, 
I get people uh, coming uh, or emailing me after the class and, and telling me, you know, I tried it out. I put one dollar and I, I did get more views. They sometimes say I did get more sales, etc. And it, it does work. It's just that we have to get over, over the, we have to get over the idea or the annoyance that I have to pay real money for these digital things that aren't even real and tangible, you know, at least if I pay money to whatever company I see my billboard on the street, but just because it's there physically doesn't mean people are actually paying attention to it and calling you. So yes, real money will uh, let you target real, uh, real audiences. For the good and for the bad. If you've been keeping up with the news, it's really amazing how these revelations are coming out. These congressional hearings are saying that, yeah, Russian groups spent $250,000 on creating targeted ads during the election season to individual precincts and all of that to sway opinions. That's the extreme negativity of all of this. For us, the positivity of it is my family business can reach an audience that would most likely want my services. And so, like in the real world, more budget, more reach, more results. So with one dollar, everyone probably has a dollar to spare, 90 people uh, will see the post. If you wrote something interesting, nice photo, good product, etc., etc., you can um, you can reach an audience. So, question: There's a big spread between ninety to two hundred and forty. So, you know, conservatively, we would always consider ninety, right? Mm -hmm. But why does it have such a big spread? The the proprietary trade secrets hidden algorithm of Facebook or all of these networks are going to operate and. On this particular day, it may show it to X amount of people, and on another day, X more. So um, that's something that I don't have a real answer for. Why is it that amount of spread? It's tra <coughs> trade secrets in Facebook or Twitter or all of them about how many it really will reach. But we will see the result in our analytics panel to, to see how far it, it went. Question. How do you know, um, so for example, for boost, is it you're paying for views, not necessarily clicks? Yes, it's more uh, about simply the views, not clicks. So whatever they do after that, that doesn't uh, go against your spend? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it'll be put out to those number of people, because they do it within you know number of days. So in one day, you sp I spent $1, and that's going to get spread out to these number of people. Uh, so I just have $1 to spend. And if I spend even more, it's not about, well, one person clicked it seven times, so I, I had to pay one dollar for that, whereas one person clicked one time and I only paid 25 cents. It's not like Google um, AdSense in that it is pay per click. It is uh, simply that it's this pool of money has them then show your content to X amount of people. And then the actions of clicking and so forth don't affect your pool of money. But it could be cheaper than PPC. It could. And really, when we're working with clients, uh, we give them both of those options of, you know, traditional Google pay-per-click and, and social media pay-per-click. And they say, well, I'm on a budget which is going to be most effective. We say, honestly, probably Facebook. Uh, out of all the networks and out of the reach of Google itself, I still would say Facebook, most likely, because you can target it. It's a set budget. And then it, it, that's it, rather than Google, where it's pay-per-click, where you're de deducting the budget based on clicks, and it may not even be effective. Yes? Uh, could you discuss what you said earlier about testing the live net versus um, pinpointing the target market? So I have these various audiences, maybe a really targeted one of Chula Vista techie people, this is going to be uh, dependent on your particular product and such, but when you're creating an audience, you have the ability to you know, go with gender, age, location, and all of that. If I set myself up, well, I'm going to target 23-year-olds up to all the way up to 27-year-olds, 
that may be too narrow. I might not really know this is my best audience. I might discover that actually, you know, old fogies of 32 might actually fit in my demographic. So casting a wide net is try not to make bees so specific in the beginning. Try not to put, you know, like one or two cities, maybe five or six. Try not to be so narrow in the age. Maybe don't quite narrow down the gender yet and, and all of that. So kind of be a little bit wider of an audience because as you run these campaigns and build the data, build the data, it will then tell you what was working best was this gender, this age, this location. Once I know that, then I can create audiences that are more targeted. But it might be better to just go with a wider net first. So what I would say, uh, payment method, uh, use, a, uh, use a credit card. Credit cards have more protection than uh, debit cards. Uh, it just in case you are overcharged, it's going to be easier to dispute this with a credit card rather than a debit card. On your debit card, basically your money goes right out of your account. That's the debit card. Uh, let's not take a photo of my um, American Express number there. And um, the uh, credit card is digital money that has to be, you know, transacted, and you can fight with uh, whoever overcharged you a lot easier with a credit card. So I would recommend using credit cards rather than debit cards for this. It has happened, unfortunately, if you don't keep track of it, you know, you forgot that you had this set up for 14 days or more or whatever, and then you get charged more than you thought. So keep mindful of where the uh, amount of time is and use a, use a credit card. So for audience length and use a credit card. It's easier to dispute charges. with a credit card rather than a debit card. Try to reach a wider audience first, then specify. So that's uh, don't narrow too much the gender, uh, uh, age, location. Uh, pick a wider range because then after campaigns run, you have data analytics, that's, or the insights, that's the term they use in Facebook. You have insights or data or stats, analytics, etc. Then after you run, you have insights to guide you for future boosts. Let me show briefly uh, one of these one of these real accounts as an example. So once you've got the account running for a little while, and um, you've got activity, you'll have 
an item up here of insights. You might not have it right away if your account is very new and it hasn't run. So with insights, the insights screen, you'd see something like this where you see your stats. Each one of these can go deeper into um, more, more detail. We have actions on page, page views, page previews. A lot of these have a little info icon next to it to explain, okay, so a page preview is the number of times people hovered over your page name or profile picture to see a preview of your page content. So on many things, you can hover over something. I hadn't even clicked it. I, I'm just like, oh, what's this about? You get a little preview of what the Facebook page is. Facebook just tracked that for that other client that that was a page preview page view is that you click the number of times a page's profile has been viewed by a logged in and logged out people. <coughs> Facebook can track if a person's logged in and they saw your page or if a person is logged out and they saw your page. Actions are clicks and all of that. So all of these will have a little icon here to kind of give you more info. This one got four likes in the time period of seven days. So this can give you up to a whole month of data. Um, so, increase followers and likes. Um, they have a difference between a follower and a like, which is kind of weird. But, let's see their official definition here. The number of new people who liked your page, and a follower, the number of new people who followed. Okay, well, follow and like. Uh, like is the traditional way that you click on the page, you click a like the thumbs up. Usually when someone gives your page the thumbs up, a like, usually they also then follow it, meaning that they want to keep up to date with what you've posted. So over on Twitter and the other networks it's easy. If I follow a page that means I want to see their stuff, I want to see their posts, their pictures, whatever they're sharing. Facebook is different because in the beginning on Facebook a like equaled a follow in the beginning, a Facebook like was a follow. A follow meant the person wanted to see everything you posted, everything you shared. Eventually, Facebook changed their algorithm for, for good for regular people, but for bad, for businesses. Eventually, Facebook said, well, we see in our stats and such that people don't want to see ads. They're on Facebook because they want to connect with friends and family. So we will not show as many ads to people. We're going to show the, their friends and family stuff. So then us marketers and businesses said, well, that's terrible. They chose to follow my business, and now Facebook is going to actively not show my stuff to them because I'm a business. And then Facebook then says from the other side of their mouth, but for businesses, great news. You're going to be able to pay to reach more people. So for a regular person, it's good, but for us, it's bad because now we have to pay. And in the beginning, it was that, that if I like the page, that means I want to see their stuff. And in the beginning, Facebook marketing and advertising was completely free. Then Facebook figured it out and all the networks figured it out. Well, how can we make money off of people? And so this is the way that it is now. It's not this Facebook is the only one that is so brazen about this. The other ones are not there yet, and there may be. But you can reach any audience completely unfiltered on Twitter and Pinterest and almost every other network. Facebook actively, because it's the biggest network in the world, the 800 pound gorilla, and the company culture and all of that, they actively, their stance officially, unofficially is a business is not going to reach people unless you pay, which is what happens in the real world. You have to pay to put that ad on the paper, on TV, you have to pay to create those flyers. It's just an extension of the real world, but with a digital twist. Yes? How do you get the page view? Because you have to post a page to um, you have to post a, a, how do you get the Exactly. Well, but I'm, on, on the page that I set up last week, mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten all these page views, and mm -hmm. so I haven't paid for anything. Did you um, did you 
just create it and leave it as is, or were you active a little? Did you post any stuff? Did yeah, you? Yeah. So, um, I have to say, from what I've been seeing personally all of these years, I have mm -hmm. to say that I think Facebook does a little bit of sort of not not exactly bait and switch. I'm trying to think of another term for it, but teaser. a teaser. It teases you in the beginning about look at all this great activity I'm getting. Wow, this is amazing. And then after a certain amount of time, it starts to die down. And then they're like, oh, you know, reach more people by boosting. So that's another one of these unofficial things, I'm sure, that they're engaging in, that in the beginning they show you how great they are and how effective it is, and then eventually you're going to start to pay. So I, because I've been worked with because I've worked with clients that you know have been established, I forgot about that. But yeah, you 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 often you often see that in the beginning that it looks like you're doing well without that much effort, but then it's going to go back down. So. Or you talk your friends into sharing your page and their page. That's yeah. another way you can get more likes. The issue with that is I, I then have to say, are we going to build uh, our business on the backs of our friends and family? Because, yeah, we do get that little bit of a boost of we get the likes, but the like is irrelevant until we make sales and such. So even I get all my friends and family to like my page, and I've got 500 likes because all my 500 friends and family liked it. Am I going to make 500 sales from my 500 friends? Uh, <laughs> discounts and free samples and all of that. So the popularity contest of, of the number of likes on Facebook, I think, is less important than the boosting stuff. The popularity contest on the other networks of building followers, Twitter and so forth, I think that's more important because that does seem at the moment to build upon itself. The more followers I get on the other networks, the more followers I further get to get results on the other networks. And it seems that on Facebook, they, you know, rewrote the script because they can, because they're the biggest network, because everyone hates Facebook, but everyone uses Facebook because everyone's on Facebook, but it's a catch-22, and I don't want Facebook, but everyone's on Facebook, so I've got to be on Facebook, but I don't like Facebook. <laughs> so the short answer, like I said, I personally don't like Facebook, and I don't log in and do family and fun and friend stuff. I log in and do business stuff, and then I log out. Um, I don't just close the browser. I log out. And so I don't even have Facebook on my phone at the moment. I don't have the Facebook app. I log on to it with a real computer where I can see the whole screen and all of that and get more control. Yes? On the, on the bottom of the screen, not that one, but the other, the uh, IE, remote website, uh, what, what is that? Did you talk about that last week? No, but we're getting to that. Oh, okay. So really this modern world of social media, uh, you either are going to go the long route of doing it for free or the short route of paying. And the short route of paying is often going to give you good results, but you do have to pay. Now again, if you, if you then get it up to a little bit of higher of uh, $20, $20 to invest in your business once in a while on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, is going to pay you back you know, double, triple, ten times, uh, most likely at some point. So these insights that I was showing here, it breaks it down in this way. Notice uh, these particular posts, what kind were there? This was just a text post, a picture post, targeting everyone. Here was the reach. So, okay, 283 people saw it. It didn't mean that there were 283 sales. Then it breaks it down to engagement. So variations on the same sort of keywords. Reach, also known as um, impressions. And then engagement, also known as conversions. So Facebook, you have reach, you have engagement. Uh, regular marketing term uh, is insights or um, impressions and engagement is conversions. And we said before impressions is people see your stuff, your content, conversions, people act on your content. They click, they call you, they visit your website, they go to the 
contact page, whatever. There's a there's a conversion. They they were someone that didn't do it and now has done it. They've been converted. So here they call it reach and engagement. And you saw the charts there that there was a, a reach. Let's see. Oops. There was a reach of uh, for example, 390. This 4th of July message reached 390. The Valentine's message, 329. But then within it, breaking it down, even though more people saw the 4th of July message, less people did anything about it. They didn't further click to go through toward what else it was, if it was you know, a, a coupon or a sale or something. And these ones had the higher engagement. The colors are also noted up here. Simply clicking in blue, simply clicking to view more. Notice it's higher. But then reactions, comments, and shares. So that's the um, giving it further a like or commenting and, and sharing. You often see the terms of organic and paid. Well, paid is obvious. Paid is what you paid for to reach the audience. So what does organic mean if it's the opposite? So paid marketing. It's obvious. You paid to reach an audience. The opposite is organic, so that would be non-paid. Paid content to reach an audience, and organic is non-paid. get back to the example of uh, this basic page. Um, we had the boost post, but there's other ways to engage in this in this marketing. One of them was listed over here about promote your website. And they're listed here as well. Let me, let me show that. We have the uh, beginner, and we have the advanced. Beginners boost a post. Advanced is ad manager, not not too big of a, not too much of a, uh, a middle ground. There's the beginner, which is what I was showing, that you've got a post, that one post you pay to reach more people. Then we jump over to advanced pretty quick, which is going to include promoting your website, Um, building likes, promotions. This ad manager, which we'll look at right now, is very advanced, but it could be very powerful. It's the same sort of principle that we need to have a credit card set up and then we figure out these sort of more advanced campaigns. I want to promote my website. I, I want to get people to come from Facebook to my website where then they can buy the product or subscribe or read my blogs or whatever. So I can pay inside of Facebook to then bring them over to my website. Let's look at that right here. So if you click on the triangle at the top right, we have Create Ads and Manage Ads. For the moment, let's look at create ad. You don't have any ads really to manage, so you won't really see much. 
let's go to create ads in the triangle at the top right. You may have to do a few more things. I've already got mine set up and it's been a while since I've got it set up so I don't recall if it looks exactly the same for you as a beginner. You may have to answer a few questions and such. But I've got a... Um, a, uh, a screen here where we can create these campaigns, choose your objective. We have these other marketing terms, awareness, consideration, conversion. So awareness is one of the one of the paths or one of the steps in the marketing funnel. So more of these keywords, more of these buzzwords, jargon, marketing funnel. So think of a funnel, you know, one termed, you know, what, do you, what would you use a, a funnel for? To pour something into something else, right? So you've got the open end at the top, the wide open end, and then the smaller end at the bottom. So you're directing liquid somewhere in a funnel. A marketing funnel is that idea in that we have the wider part of the funnel, awareness, the thinner part, consideration, the thinnest part, conversion, result. So the theory in the theories in marketing, and there, and sometimes there's other steps in between. This has only got three. There's, it's very common to have five or more, um, if you really want to show off. But here you've got these three ones, the widest part of the funnel. We simply want people to become aware that we exist. We have brand awareness. Increase awareness of your brand by reaching people who are more likely to be interested reach show your ad to the maximum number of people so awareness is just that hey I exist I am yet another bakery I am yet another pizza parlor I am yet another lawyer realtor fencing company dog walker so just building awareness people know I exist well the next level of that is now I have consideration people know that I exist but I want them to consider me as opposed to my competition down the street or on the other side of, of town. So you have these possible ways to build higher consideration. Simply driving traffic. Send more people to a destination on or off Facebook, such as a website, app, or messenger conversation. This is where they're going to consider me because my uh, my fees are better than the competition. My inventory is better than the competition, which hopefully ultimately goes to the conversions, which is they actually buy the product, they actually visit the location, real or physical, or the generic idea of a conversion, drive a valuable action on your website or app, like a phone call, an email, a subscription. Awareness, consideration, conversion. Technically, you can just jump to one or the, or the other, but the, in the theories in marketing, they, they teach that it's better to take a potential client through the whole, through all the levels of the funnel. So awareness, uh, let potential customers potential customers know you exist consideration show potential customers why you're better than the competition conversion make that sale, or subscription, or phone call, or whatever. So marketing is a huge topic. There are, you know, I guess even master's degrees in this. 
bachelor's degrees associates this is a big this is a this is a college major marketing um, I can in only introduce enough of it for you to get the general idea and then specific actions so here what Facebook has is pay us to create content that meets these goals of creating awareness for your business or consideration for your business or conversions for your business and as I said you don't have to do them all you can jump directly here I want sales the end I want to make sales off of this that's perfectly fine you know, I can click on on that one so I've got I want to make sales so I have to create a product catalog Facebook now lets you create a product catalog in Facebook for a long time you you, you couldn't your products would be on your website. I have to drive people back to my website to see the catalog to buy the product. Now, you can put your products on Facebook. And I need to educate myself a little bit more on this because it's relatively new. I think within the last year or so, they really made it for all the public. So I need to get educated on this. But now you can put your, your products on Facebook. And from what I last checked a, a little while ago, I don't think they charge you um, commissions like they may over on on PayPal or Etsy and such they may have changed I have to look into it but because this is such a big network maybe this might be something that a lot of people want to do instead of having their own website with their own catalog that they have to update and maintain you won't have the same sort of customization that you have on your own website however on your website you have the full control of design of content full control but here on Facebook, you're going to be limited to a basic Facebook design and the kinds of products and some other limitations. So I can't go much further here. I have to create a product catalog. Instead, let's say store visit. I want people to visit my location in a real world. Okay, so well, this one requires that on this Facebook page, over on my settings, I have an address for this business, a physical location. So that's not going to work if I'm, let's say, a web designer and I want to get hired to make websites because I, I run my business out of my garage. And I don't want people to come to my garage. I want to go to their location and make them a website. So this one might not work there as well. Yes? For the product catalog designers, uh, so right now you're like the ads manager, it is the account for mm -hmm. those What happens if you have multiple clients? Um, is it better to manage everybody via your account or go through their Well, uh, you can have multiple managers. So I would be authorized as the manager of, of those businesses that you saw on that other screen, I'm the one authorized to set that all up. Other people can also be authorized and everyone can join in and manage this stuff for that client. Uh, that of course could cause confusion. Uh, what account am I in? Who's doing what? So if you have one specific email with that login dedicated to logging into Facebook ad manager and such, then that's the one you could use to confirm this is the account that I think I'm managing and I don't make a mistake. So there's all these possibilities to choose from. I'm saying them in general. And there is also here at the top, help. Choosing an objective. Maybe I wanted to jump right into sales, but that needed a lot of setup that I'm not ready for. I want to store visits. Well, I need to go back and further refine my profile. Maybe I need conversion. Well, that's why you've got the choose an objective. Maybe you do want to do some of these other tactics first. Can you click on traffic? Where? Uh, traffic. Oh, traffic right here? Yeah, that's just what driving to the website. Mm -hmm. You can uh, check it yourself also if you view your own ad manager. So uh, traffic here says send more people to your destination on or off 
uh, Facebook. So this is similar to the one we saw on the other screen where it says, what did it say, promote my website? That would ultimately take you here, drive traffic to my website. Is it more, I think it just is pretty pricey, right? No, it's all the same sort of thing of as little as a dollar. Oh. But the more you pay, the more, the more results you get. Yes? So you could do this without paying them, right? I mean, if you had kind of an, a good idea of your marketing demographics and everything, could you not just drive through links and video to your website from a Facebook page? I mean, you could. You have all of these uh, possibilities to do. Um, let's see how far I can go without having to actually pay for it. But let's say I do traffic here. Yes, you could use Facebook. I mean, you don't have to use the, their ad campaigns. I mean, you could have your page set up and drive it through links and videos back to your website, right? And through your website. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, yes, but again, unfortunately, yeah, in here, if I switch over back to the business, um, yeah, I could use this Facebook business page for free and put here links and photos and everything back to my website. But again, remember the problem is Facebook actively pushes down businesses to reach an audience you will reach some amount of audience and only they really know their trade secrets. So you will reach some amount of an audience if you do it all completely for free. But you will reach more of an audience when you pay for it. So in the old days, yeah, that was the tactic, just like Twitter. I'm just going to be active and every day I'm going to post something new on Facebook or once a week I'm going to be active. And you probably see some of that result still. But comparatively, then when you start boosting stuff and making ads, it'll suddenly be double, triple, five times more. Like in the real world too. I can have one poster on the front of my business on my business. And if someone walks by, they see that ad. Or I can put that ad on the corner of every block, not for free, and then reach more people to get back to the business. So this screen is reminiscent of a boosted post but it's more powerful and it also then tells me here well I can have a potential reach of 218 million people based on this audience so that looks familiar and you're gonna have a lot more options to work with and that's why this is it's, it's 0 to 60 there's the beginner of a boosting a post very straightforward gives you good results then there's already the advanced method of, of ad manager. I won't go really too much further there. You should explore it yourself and read the help bubbles and read the help more, help me more and all of that because it could get you uh, a lot more results, but it is a lot more setup. So if I were to look, if I'm checking my page and I see promote, that's just going to take you back to one of those variations of the ad manager. And if I ever see where it says promote my website, that's going to take you back to the ad manager to, uh, to, uh, to do one of these types of promotions. So I think it's then um, it's then up to you to kind of st try using it, and you have these various uh, you know statuses that you can create, f photos, all of these. These are just things for you to try out. And if you created this testing account, try it out and see how it works, and then delete it. Instead of doing it on your real site, you can do things like nice slideshows with music. And you have these other things like a canvas. What's a canvas? Look at it yourself. We've got live video. This works if I've got a web camera, or it also works really well on a device. You turn on the live video. We'll have a lesson on a different day where I'm going to focus more on live video and part three of the class. So that's, um, that's another thing to share. You've also got 
what else does it have here? It also has uh, uh, events and products and all of that. So you can do these on your own. Here's write a note, which is their version of a blog. So blog is articles, articles on a website. Well, this is, I think, kind of redundant to whatever already a status is, but a note, it's a little bit more like a blog, so you can attach like a big cover photo to it and write a title, and then write as many paragraphs and add pictures as you want and do a little styling to it. So it's more like a blog, like an article. It's kind of hidden over here under, under um, you have status, and then you have events, products, and more. And it's under note. So any of these things here, like milestone and all of that, any of these things are just content to get people's attention for them to go from impressions to conversions. And you can use all of these for free all day long and you will get some results. You get more results when you go through promote, boost post, the ad manager and all of that. And this That's just the way it is now in online marketing. And it's really the way you want to do it nowadays on Facebook because they, they have said publicly, officially, that yeah, because our, because our Facebook uh, friends don't want to see so many ads, you're not going to see so many ads. But then they tell us marketers, if you want to reach those people, you can pay, and you will reach the people. Twitter and the, le and the rest, you, it's very open, you don't have to uh, pay on those, and I do see results without having to pay, but you have to be active. You have to use Twitter like every day or, you know, two or three times a week, or Pinterest and such. So overall, when you make a post, like the, that one you did, Scale This Saturday, mm -hmm. at this point, if you didn't pay for it, it's just going to go to all those contacts on your right? Nope. These contacts on my right simply shows that I have a connection with them in my personal profile. These contacts right here don't necessarily know that this page exists. So, no, these people here, they won't see that. Right now, all zero followers of this page will see it. And even if I were to recommend my page to all my 50 friends, even then Facebook might not show it to all 50. Because again, they've said, people don't want to see stuff about businesses unless they pay. So that's the big double-edged sword of Facebook that I could be active all day long, and even if I have 500 fans or 500 followers, you will not reach all 500 of them, even though they have decided to follow you. And that's what I said that in the old days. In the old days, a follow meant they wanted to see everything. Nowadays, some trade secrets, some proprietary algorithm decides. Nowadays, you won't reach all those that have decided to follow you unless you start boosting and making ads. So yes, it is annoying and cynical and, and all of that, and that, that's how it is, because that's how it is in the real world too. I'm not going to get my, you know, I've got a great uh, bakery, and uh, I want to advertise it all over on a certain TV channel. That's not free unless you go to public access, but I guess, do you also pay for public access? So um, you're going to have to pay in the digital world like in the real world. Even if you've got that person flipping that sign around on the corner, hopefully you're paying the minimum wage for being in the sun all day long. But all of that, putting a flyer on someone's windshield, that flyer, uh, you, you made copies of it. Maybe you went to Kinko's and you made a thousand copies. Well, that was a few dollars. Maybe you borrowed the company printer and made, com made uh, copies there, but then you know, you're borrowing the company printer. So in the digital world, we still have to deal with paying to market people. It's, it should not be shocking and annoying and, uh, and all of that, because we have to do it in the real world. So we'll take our first break in a moment, but any other general questions um, in, in, in general of Facebook or, or marketing? Digital marketing, yes. Um, are you able to post, like if you have the different pages, you're the, you're the page manager, are you able to post on other web, not websites, other Facebook pages as that page manager, or does it only Yes, good point. That one's one that people request all the time. Let me do that right here. So 
if if I'm my if I'm myself, Victor, and I go over to McDonald's, I can um, I can post on the McDonald's page as, as Victor if they allow it. If they have a share somewhere here, where is it? At community. I'm going to share my experience of a really good McNugget I bought. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That that depends on on um, like I said, monologue or dialogue. So they might have they might have um, you know locked it down because you know when you're a big company, you're also a big target. Uh, let's see if I can find it so to show that. I wonder if you can't comment because you don't like it. <laughs> Maybe. Because you can't comment on some other people's stuff if you don't like it. <laughs> with people, it's a little bit different because it's people, but with businesses, it may or may not. We, I have to check <laughs> on that. But um, okay, let, let's just say on that topic, uh, people often ask, okay, I want to comment or I want to interact with a page uh, as a business. If I were to click like at this point here, this would like it as Victor not as the business Victor's Bakery. So we have these options here hidden in the three dots menu where I can like it as a page. It used to be that once I switched over to my page, everything that I do in Facebook is as the page. They made this change a while ago and everyone hated it and I still hate it because now you have to do an extra step to to be explicit and say as the business I want to do something as the business. As soon as I get away from looking at the screen Victor's Bakery, I am behaving on Facebook as Victor Campos. So if I were to click or to comment, um, I, I would need to uh, explicitly change over to the... right here, if I'm going to comment, I'll show it there in a moment too, I would have to explicitly jump over here, like as your page. And then it'll say, okay, which page? As Victor's Bakery. Like. McDonald's has been added to your favorites. I've liked it. In theory, in the old days, I would now keep up to date with everything that McDonald's is posting. But now, because they, they're, they're different, unless they are boosting their post for me to reach it, I might not really see it. It'll focus on the my the content of my friends and family. If I want to comment, so over here, National Coffee Day, start to write a comment. Well, this is going to be written as Victor. I see my picture right there. I want it to write here as a business. So you have this, liking and commenting as Victor Campos, or switching to like as and comment as Victor's Bakery. Now it shows that whatever I want to write here is going to come from Victor's Bakery. What if you wanted to share a picture? Uh, it's uh, it's going to be here depending on uh, on what they've allowed. They might not have allowed a picture post, uh, but I can do you know the emojis. And I've got these new things, which are stickers, which are like Facebook's version of emoji. <laughs> so here I have a little... Buen provecho. I've got a little armadillo. <laughs> um, if they've allowed it, they, they would have a button as well to attach a photo. Uh, I can also um, add in my own link. That would be an active link. Uh, so here I'm, um, uh, I'm going to post it. So right there. So now on this site of 73 million likes, I have posted as Victor's Bakery, but I had to explicitly switch over. And I'll write that in my notes. But now you have to explicitly switch over to what account you're trying to work with. The default will be your personal. So that's going to be super embarrassing. and and bad for most people because they're going to forget, oh, I didn't switch over to the business and I wrote this as the person. So you have to delete it. 
you know you can go back to your post here delete it and then and then write it again as the business question um, yeah if if um, let's say McDonald's let's say someone put a post on there that said McDonald's coffee sucks mm -hmm. could, could McDonald's um, marketing department can basically the question is can you delete a post that someone put Yes, but it's better, like we said last week, uh, to activate moderation. It won't show up until you allow it. So uh, you can control your message on Facebook pretty well compared to all the other networks. That's one of the big things that I, I would give them thumbs up for. Uh, so yeah, if it's off topic, if it's mean, if it's whatever, you can completely remove it and, and keep it all puppies and sunshine. But um, you have to do that extra effort. And there are the settings for the particular account where you turn on moderate, meaning don't allow anything to appear until I approve it. Mm -hmm. And that might be better. Even though you and I, we see this right there, it might not be visible across the, to everyone else, right? Because if they have moderation turned on... I don't remember if it tells you, because I usually see it from the point of view as the, as the business. I don't remember, if, I don't know if this went completely right out to McDonald's. You guys can go to McDonald's right now and see if my message appeared there to confirm it. I don't remember if it goes there automatically or if it looks like it went there, but it won't show until okay. they moderate it or if it gives you a message, this is held until moderation. Some networks explicitly tell you that this comment is held until moderation. And some networks don't show it until it's approved, but it looks like I posted it. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. One last question. Yes. If you don't mind, um, mm -hmm. the, does Facebook have anything like Yelp? Like yeah. Thing. Yes. What's it called? Uh, it's in there somewhere about uh, commenting. We talked about this last week. There was a. Oh, if they've I'll, got I'll a just look. If, if, yeah. if you, so it's called like review thing or whatever. I can search. Yeah, you might not be able to review this one because it's really lo It's really based on location. This is just McDonald's all in general. If I get McDonald's in National City. Most likely there, it'll have then a spot there about review it or, or whatever they call it. So yeah, you can have reviews just like Yelp. So they're trying to do what Yelp is doing. Mm -hmm. But Yelp is still bigger at the moment, but uh, Facebook has its own version. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, let's uh, take a break. And uh, it's 10.55, we'll be back at 11.05, and then we'll go on. I'll write these notes about remembering to switch your profile, and then we'll come back at 11.05.